in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me. I am as the mighty, mighty, mighty angel snuff number seven. I am also your soul brother number one. I want to thank Hey Earth. Morning, morning to you. I want to thank all of those who joined me last night. You took me by surprise. I only wanted to make a short 10 minute video. It turned out to be <laughs> an hour or so. I want to thank you for joining me last night. I want to thank our Mr. Noble Levine for her participation and our soul brother Talib. We are the three musketeers of reality. <laughs> Yeah, all right, Earth. <laughs> I want to thank my partners in crime for being online with me last night. I truly, if you listen to the video from the beginning, I said this was going to be very, very short. It's all good. I, I really do enjoy the time we spend together. I'm so happy to know that there are those, even though I'm surrounded by persons lost in fantasy and fiction, I'm so happy to know that some of us have liberated ourselves from slave teachers and beliefs and spirituality, religion and black conscious and black scholarship and black and black and voodoo and all this stuff that clearly has not done nothing for us and is doing nothing and will never do nothing. It's all right, uh, Earth man. You can uh, check out the, the replay, but you but you is here now, so like like Hammer always said, it's all good. Speaking of it's all good, um, early this morning, I'm doing my thing going through the city of Chicago and this Caucasian lady not paying no attention probably late for work she's not paying no attention she's she's inches from running into my uh, vehicle I mean just inches caused me to have to hit the brakes pretty hard to avoid and she's steady She's steady, getting closer to me. If this vehicle tap her little car, she's done. Now I'm not gonna get hurt, and chances are this vehicle's not gonna really get damaged. But I cannot say the same for her. But when you have people trying to go to their slave job, regardless of color, whether y'all like it or not, Caucasian people are the majority of the folks running to the plantation every morning, grab their cup of coffee, they gotta have coffee, they drink tons of coffee, get their coffee, maybe a donut, an egg and some hash browns, because they know once they get to work, that's it. 
Now this woman, in a hurry to go to her job, she cannot see and don't pay attention to a vehicle that's 13 six foot tall, 50 over 53 foot long, and she's gonna run into it. Willing to risk her, uh, her life, not her job, but actually her life. Her little vehicle probably weigh about 8,000 pounds at the max. This thing I'm in is 70, 7 zero, 70,000 pounds. But this is what happens to you when you have what they call tunnel vision. When you have tunnel vision, you only see what you want to see. I'm going to say that again. When you have tunnel vision, you only see what you want to see. A lot of dogs have tunnel vision. They escape the house, they get out of the fence, and they run into the street, and the only thing they see is what they want to see. They don't pay no attention to the cars, the traffic out in the road. That's why you'll see a lot of dogs and squirrels and whatever, animals, roadkill, because they have tunnel vision. They only concern in what, oh man. They only concern in what they're doing. They don't give a damn about the cars. They don't give a damn about nothing else going on. Only what they're doing. What they want. So in the so-called black community, among the so-called Negro, the people are sold descendants of slaves born in America have an African or Aboriginal or other ancestry, melanated skin, however you want to call it, born in America. This is the problem of the so-called Negro in America. We have tunnel vision. We only see what we want to see and nothing else exists. Nothing else matters. It's about what I want, what I do. And then you wonder why when you run into traffic, you end up as roadkill. The so-called Negro in America has been roadkill because the mindset of the Aboriginal person, I'm a native, is is a mindset of having tunnel vision. The mindset of the Pan-African is the mindset of one having tunnel vision. I'm only concerned in what I want. Nothing else exists. But it do exist. And when you run out in the street, it runs you over. And you see this time and time again. Aboriginals and African Pan Africans constantly being on the side of the road, roadkill. Because you ignore the real environment. Nothing else exists except what you want. Now, the person claiming to be an Aboriginal, Native American, they are not as obsessed as the Pan African. I don't really see a lot of uh, Aboriginal, uh, Native American brothers and sisters shoving that down, trying to shove that down your throat and getting angry and upset. Some of them, but I really don't see 
that like you do in Pan-Africanism. You reject being an African and these people ready to go get a spear and stab you with it. But both people, both of you are wrong. And your tunnel vision doesn't allow you to come to the right conclusion. You cannot see clearly. But see, for me and many of us who come to this ministry, we can see clearly now the rain has gone. There are certain things you cannot ignore. If you ignore certain facts, then you're going to draw the wrong conclusion and the those who are native believe that the so-called Negro in America are natives and those who think that we are Africans, both of you are wrong because you're not taking in all the facts. Both of you are wrong. It's amazing to me that people come to my channel and have been listening to my words for, for quite a while. They still have that black conscious, pan-African, RBG nation, black first, that mindset. They still have that aboriginal, Native American. They still have that mindset. When I have said and shown to you over and over again, you've drawn to the wrong conclusion because you you refuse to accept the facts and you ignore the facts, just like in religion. And see, really, that's what all this is about. The people who are Pan-Africans, really Pan-African, they have turned it into a religion. Those who believe we are natives and aboriginal, they've turned it into a religion. That's why they will use that word, you don't believe you're African. You don't believe we're natives. Because they really don't know. But they want to talk like they know. And you don't know. Because if you did know, then instead of saying Aboriginal, you would speak in specific terms. You would say uh, the Choctaw people, tribe, or the Sioux, or uh, I don't know too many, too many of these Native Americans. I know the Sioux. Uh, it's a whole lot of them out there. I, I can't think of, but but you know where I'm going with this. And the African thing. Are you from the Ivy Coast? Are you Congolese? Are you from Ghana? Be specific. They're never specific. It's always African. It's always Native American. My brothers and sisters who claim they're natives, they tell me about, or they call North America Turtle Island. North America is a continent. Where, where do you get this island thing from? There's a difference between islands and continents, but they call this It's impossible for North America or this region of the United States of North America for you to call it an island when it is surrounded by water on the west and on the east, but on the top you got land and on the bottom 
you got land. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I ask too many questions. Things don't make sense to me. I want to remind the Pan-African, I want to remind the Aboriginal, those who claim to be Native American, I want to remind you of something and you ignore it, but I'm not going to let you ignore it. And both of these people, or both of these mindsets, they're not going to challenge I want to make this point to both the Pan-African and the Aboriginal, those who believe, believe they are Native American. And uh, something that I notice about both of these camps they have a delusional idea. They have a delusional way, a picture of looking at Africans and Aboriginal people. Now the Pan-African, unlike the Native American brothers and sisters, they look at Africa in a future tense like Wakanda or Zamunda or someplace like that because Wakanda and Zamunda both represent a lifestyle that they are used to living with Europeans for 500 years they really cannot relate to the primitive tribes and other ways of life of Africans. Now they will brag about ancient Egypt, ancient Ethiopia, Timbuktu and things of that nature. Just bragging, they don't want to live that life. They want to keep, they want, they want running water, they want Facebook, they want YouTube, they want all the beautiful things that the European has gave them and these Africans basically emulate that lifestyle they love this lifestyle. They want their cars. They want their boats and RVs. They want their computers. So they look at Africa like Wakanda, the Black Panther in Wakanda, Eddie Murphy coming to America, Zumumba or whatever. Fantasy. They look at Africa in a fantasy sense. They don't look at things from a realistic point of view. And like I said, you have tunnel vision. You only see what you want to see. And the Ab Aboriginal, the natives, those of whom I interact with and I see, they want to return to a past and a people that don't exist. The Pan-African and the Native American, both of them have no relatives, none. The Pan-African goes to Africa, have no relatives. The Native Aboriginal do not mention no relatives. No Africans is claiming them as a relative no native people, no aboriginal is claiming these people as a relative. Because you are not them. You carry their DNA, you carry their characteristics, but you are not them. Let me explain. You simply ignore the facts. So it's a belief system. It's what you believe
<laughs> oh man, this is just, it's just mind boggling. Some of these Aboriginal Native American people, brothers and sisters, and mind you, I do respect you, I love us, but you're not that. I cannot sit around and just and, and, and be silent. You're not that. But if you want to be that, it's all great. You can be a Pan-African, it don't bother me at all. I'm just letting you know that what's up. That's not who you are. That's not what we are. Like Papa said, I am, I am what I am. And that's all that I am. These Native American brothers and sisters, some of them dress up like Native people. 1700s, 1800s, and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, they y'all love y'all costumes so you can fit the role. If those people was alive in 2020, I very much doubt they would be living the life that was living in the 1800s. Thing, things change. Now, sometimes things don't change. So that means you are willing to live the way they did. That means you don't need, only thing you need is to get you some land and live off the land. You don't need Facebook, you don't need YouTube, you don't need computers, you don't need none of this stuff. But see, it's a conflict of interest. You can't be both of them. You're gonna be an African or you're gonna be a Native American. But see, you're trying to be a European and you wanna be a Native American too and you wanna be an African too, it don't work that way. And you look so damn stupid living the life of a European because that's all you know. Then you dress up like an Indian and you dress up like some kind of Zulu warrior. You look like a clown in the eyes of the world. Identity confused. And the world knows you ain't no African, you ain't no Native American. You only see that in your vision because you suffer tunnel vision. You cannot ignore. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, farm life, but let me remind you of something. The African, the Pan-African and the Aboriginal they will tell you that their people suffered being slaves under Europeans. Let's start from there. We agree on that, right? Now, this means for hundreds of years, not for a few days, not for a few months, for hundreds of years, that means your ancestors, regardless if they was African or Aboriginal, Native, Native American, this means they was property. This means they was farm animals. Let me repeat that. Our ancestors was farm animals. They was property. They was just like the pigs, just like the cows, like the chickens, the horses. Our ancestors was farm animals and they was treated like farm animals. And farm animals are domesticated. They are not wild. They are domesticated. They did not go out into the jungle and grab chicken, cows, and horses. Some they did, but the majority are domesticated. Slave
slavery is all they know. Being, being domesticated. Now, I'm gonna use the chicken as an example. Go do a Google search. Do a Google search and find out what the original chicken look like. The original chicken is called the guinea fowl. That's where the modern day chickens come from. From the guinea fowl. But look at all the chickens, different chickens. Do the Google search. Look at the original chicken. chickens. The ancestor, the guinea fowl, is the original, is the ancestor of all these other chickens that you see. But, but, they are not the guinea fowl. Let's understand this. These other chickens have been breeding, their DNA have been manipulated, and change. Many of these chickens don't even look like the guinea fowl, but that's where all of them come from. That's the ancestor. Go look, go look and find out what the original pig looked like. The original pig is the peccary and the boar. I believe it was the Chinese that bred the pig into the animal that we know of as today. The pig and the hog is not a peccary and a boar, but that's the ancestors of the pig and the hog. They're different. The ancestor of the dog is the wolf. Dogs are not wolves, but they carry that DNA. They carry some of their behaviors. They, some dogs look like wolves, but they are not. Our ancestors was treated the same way as the other farm animals. They bred slaves that was good for the house, they bred slaves that was good for being out in the field and doing that hard manual labor out in the field. They bred people just for those tasks. They wanted you light-skinned and they wanted you of a lighter build to put you in the house so that you would be a less threat. They bred the slave just for that. They bred you as big as you can get, as strong as you can get, to put you out in the field. They bred you for that. The same way they, they breed horses and cows. Some horses, they breed so they can win races. Some horses, they breed so they can plow the field. They bred the how they bred these animals for these specific tasks. Some dogs are good for hunting. Some dogs, they bred those dogs to chase rats. Some dogs are retrievers. Shoot a duck and go get that duck for the, for the hunter. We was treated the same way. And so when you breed like that, over the was forced to breed, forced to mix. And then the slave owner raped our people. So you have a, a different variety of dark skinned people. Some of them we don't even know nothing about. And we have African blood, people from the continent, and even the islands and the Pecklewood 
and then we start, then they bred us for specific purposes. And so just like the cow, just like the chicken and the horse, the farm animal, you change, you begin to change from the original into something totally different. Yeah, you still are African. Yeah, you still Aboriginal. But you are not them. A chicken is not a guinea fowl. The thing is not a peccary or a boar. It's different. It's changed. And this is what you ignore. Because you want to be connected to somebody but in order to be connected to somebody, you got to be pure. And we're not pure nothing. We're not pure anything. That's why you don't have any relatives. The Chinese can go to China, they have relatives. The African can go to Africa and have relatives. You go there, the only thing you can do is say, where is my room I stay in at the hotel? That's the only thing you can do. You have no relatives. That's why you have no connection to nobody. At all. Because you're not them. And this is something we don't, we refuse to accept. We just ignore. And you can do that all you want to. That's a personal problem. I don't want to be them. I don't want to be them personal. I'm happy to be what I am. I am what I am. That's all that I am. I don't want to be them. I got my own brain. I can develop my own culture, my own language. I can do my own thing. If they want to be if they want to have a relationship with me, that's cool. If they don't, that's cool. I don't need them. We don't need them. I'm proud to be who I am. And that's all that I am. When you try to be, take on somebody else's identity, then they can tell you whether you fake or not because you don't own that identity. That's why Africans call you fake African. That's why some of these old, uh, supposed to be Native American folk, they call you fake Native people. That's why they call you fake Muslim. Everything about you fake. Y'all fake Arabs. Y'all just wanna be everything except who you are. Ain't there's nothing wrong with being who you are. And the sad thing about that is many of these people are trying to be like you. They trying to get on the soul train. I remember in the 70s, that was one of the coolest things to do. Try to be a soul brother. Try to be a soul sister. White folks running around I'm your blue-eyed soul brother. I'm your blue-eyed soul sister. They trying to be like you. They trying to get on your train. And you sitting around trying to be like these losers. But if that's what you want to do, so be it. But I'm not, I'm not getting on your on board with that stuff. I'm proud to be who I am. And for, and for those who follow Dr. Umar Johnson, the Prince of Pan-Africanism, King Kong of Conscious, he keeps talking about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was not a Pan-African person. He rejected that. Frederick Douglass said, after 270 years, the so-called Negro is their own people 
just like I'm saying right now today. And you are a Native American, not like what the Aboriginal folks talk about. You are a Native American because we was created by chattel slavery right here on this land. So we are Native. It's all that you know. Been here, we have been here going on 500 years. You want to be something that you're not and look silly, that's your business. I'm not going to join your, I'm not going to join that nonsense because I know better and I can accept the reality of things. Even your DNA test, your DNA test tell you you're not pure, you don't belong no damn where. And you just ignore it. Funny, none of these people are chasing you. You don't want to be an African. These Africans or Aboriginal Native people, none of them trying to chase you down. None of them talking about, oh, they need to come back home. Oh, you said Ghana. Ghana doing that stuff because they found a way to make some money. They see how stupid and gullible and naive you are. They like, hey, we can make some money out of this. That's why Ghana is doing what Ghana is doing. And in the meantime, the citizens of Ghana, over 35,000 trying to get the hell out of that country. Run to America, run to Europe. Why is that? If Ghana is so great, they want you to return home for what? In the long run, what do they have waiting on you? That's the question. Because the people that's, that was born there, trying to get the hell out of there, and here you are, because you got money. Go there poor. Give all your money away, and go there without a dime, and let's see what happened to you. Boyce Watkins. T.I., Beyonce, and Jay-Z. Give all your money away. Go to Ghana, return to Ghana with no money, and let's see what happened to you. So, uh, I can't do it. I know better. I accept the reality of things. How are you going to be an African? How are you going to be Aboriginal? And you just, and we've been through the process that I just talked about. You're not pure. Matter of fact, even biologically, you don't even know if you are related to the people you related to because during, because in the in the breeding farms, you had fathers making babies with daughters. Sons was giving, getting their mothers pregnant, and cousins, and all, all stuff was. It was. It's all, our history is all messed up. And you run around here trying to connect where you have no connection. The only ancestors I want to talk about is the ones that I know about: Dr. King, Malcolm, Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner people like that. I'm not interested in ancient Egypt and all the other nonsense you have no connection to, you have no contribution to fabricated lies. Same thing for these native people. You have no connection. You have no contribution to those histories. And then you laugh at the Mississippi campaign and you laugh at the concept of soul but you always talk about our ancestors our ancestors was the one had it not been for them Pecklewoods terrorizing them in the south we would be living 
in states controlled by the so-called Negro people. That's what they was doing. So when you laugh at the Mississippi campaign, you only you laughing at your ancestors that you claim that you respect and you love. They also called themselves soul brothers and sisters. That was going on before I was born. I was born into that. So you laughing at your own people because you don't like Angel Snub Nub Seven. But that's your ancestors too. But you caught up in your tunnel vision, you caught up in your belief system. The reason why they were soul brothers and sisters was because they was embracing who they was. They respect Africa, but they had respect for who they was, unlike you. They didn't want to be no African. They want to be who they And there's nothing wrong with that. And whether you like it or not, I don't care what costume you put on. Dashi, eagle, eagle feathers, in, eagle feather bonnet you put in your head, all these costumes that you wear, when it's all said and done, you are and all that native stuff, all that you want, that's how you're gonna die. This is a fact. All that other stuff ain't not, nothing but some feel good rhetoric. Like Judge Judy said, a bunch of malarkey. Now, if you really wanna be a Native American, if you really wanna be a so called African, the only way you you can do that. You gotta let African people raise your children. Their children be raised on the continent in that lifestyle. Now they will become African. Well, not African, they're gonna become a specific people, Zulu or Ghanaian or Somalian or whatever you choose. The same thing with the uh, Aboriginal. That's the only way But you and me But you and me We're done We are European Negroes Living with race This is all that we know We've never been independent This is all that we know So we look really silly that's the reason why you're not trying to run and live in Africa. That's the number one reason. You, you, you know, because you know it's, it's foreign to you. You ain't in no rush to go to no Africa. It just sounds good. You don't know those people. It's foreign. Same thing with that Aboriginal. Both of these people talking all that African Aboriginal stuff and live like Europeans 24 hours a day. Cause that's all that you know. Then you wanna get angry at me, but you ain't, you living the same way I'm living. Like a damn European, that's all that you know. Driving cars, playing on Facebook, YouTube. Going to Disneyland. And that's what you're gonna be to the day you die. Like King Noble said, that's a fact. So keep living in your fantasy world, in your tunnel vision, and nothing else exists. But it makes no difference. Because reality is reality. No matter what you have in your mind sooner or later you're going to deal with reality on that note let me get out of here appreciate y'all for being here thank you earth man for being in the chat room spending some time with your brother 
want to get that out of my chest. And, uh, oh yeah, I also want to say, Frederick Douglass was not a Pan-African. He did not believe in that. They used Malcolm X to promote Pan-Africanism also. Malcolm X did not claim to be a, a Pan-African. He said he was a black nationalist. Which really comes from the Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam wanted an all black nation. Same thing. Malcolm X was not into the African. He was Malcolm X was a Muslim. He still was under and still was influenced by the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. He believed in having a connection, a relationship with Africa, but he did not believe running around trying to be an African. He did not say we was Africans like that. We was black, Afro-Americans. That's what Malcolm said. But during his time, he talked about the uh, connection, you know, the ancestor, because he believed in the transatlantic slave trade, the African story. During his time, but when you look at the transatlantic slave trade story, it don't make any sense. Mathematically, it don't make sense. Condition-wise, it don't make sense. And you talk about millions and millions of people. No, no, no. This is the age of information. People start thinking for themselves. And I know Pan-Africans are all upset. And you can be upset all that you want to. But see, one at one time, these stories was told and nobody really thought about it. Now people think about what they are taught and there's a, there's a lot of holes in the transatlantic slave story and if Malcolm X had lived, he probably would have realized the same thing. But black nationalism is not pan-Africanism. But see, Malcolm is dead so y'all can take Malcolm and paint him the red, black, and the green. And Malcolm was not red, black, and green. Matter of fact, I don't even think Marcus Garvey, I know he represented the red, black, and green flag, but this pan-African, this RBG nation garbage, this RBGGG nation, whatever, RBGX, all this garbage that they got, putting Marcus Garvey's name on it. I don't think Marcus Garvey had nothing to do with that. The UNIA was very diverse. Marcus Garvey was able to handle the differences of people in his organization. But these RBG type folks, it's a religion for them. It's not, it's not about what Marcus Garvey talking about, but forcing your morality on people, your religious ideas on people. Marcus Garvey did not teach about Jesus. This guy called, uh, this guy called Pharaoh said that, believe in Jesus Christ. And he tries to force his religion, his religious ideas on his listeners. Marcus Garvey was a Christian and you don't you don't hear speeches by Marcus Garvey about his religion it was about nation building up you mighty nation you can do what you will he did not say if we believe in God you nation we can accomplish he did not talk about no damn religion. 
That was a personal thing for Marcus. And even Malcolm X took the religion out of it. He had two components to his organization. One was for the struggle, one for, was for, for spirituality. Because Malcolm knew that religion is very divisive. You cannot build nothing based on religion when, when religion is involved. Marcus Garvey was smart enough to understand that too. He did not push his religion. And these men did not have tunnel vision. But they could only act upon what they knew at that time. So on that note, let me get out of here. And uh, I hope that, the, that your day is peaceful and it's warmer. Y'all stay safe. We live in a situation that could, could be very peaceful at this time and change for the worse in a matter of seconds. It's happened before, it can happen again. Don't get too comfortable. But that's your problem. We are really comfortable. When you go to the sink, you expect water to be there. When you flip the switch, you expect electricity to be there. And one of these days, you're gonna turn on the faucet, the water, it's not going to come and it's never going to return as well as the electricity. It's just a matter of time. America is falling. It deserves to fall. When she going to fall, I don't know. I wish I could help. I wish I could help make her fall. She's on her way down. There's no doubt about it. But like all things, anything that is alive is going to try to live as long as possible. And some of these Negroes, they claim they can't wait to the fall of America. But you are connected to America. If America go to war with Iran, you go to war with Iran. If America go to war with China, you go into war with China or Russia or whatever because you're connected. So whatever happened to America gonna happen to you. And clearly your God ain't gonna do a, ain't gonna do a damn thing to separate you from that. So when America die, all of us die. You only got one chance to try to turn things around to have a, but you don't want to do that. Too much work, too much like right. Talk about that Mississippi campaign. I, I play on YouTube all day. Preach brother, preach. Right to the mass grave. Preach brother, preach. Teach brother preach as they blow your brains out, kicking your body into mass graves. Preach brother preach, sending your ass to these FEMA camps. And we deserve it. Because we take things for a joke, we live real comfortable, and we think this is the way things gonna be. Or maybe we gambling. It ain't gonna be in my lifetime. Selfish ass. So you don't care nothing about your, your children, your great grandchildren. As long as you can survive and get away, it's all right. See, we selfish like that. We don't care about future generations. That's the reason.
I cannot be like Dr. Dr. King. I cannot be like Malcolm X. Why should I sacrifice for, for a bunch of ingrates? Sacrifice my life, my time, my money for a bunch of people who don't even give a damn about themselves. You want to be a savior? If that faceless troll Alquan want to be your savior, so be it. If Maurice Muhammad and all these other Louis Farrakhan, if they want to be a, mess a, a messiah and savior, so be it. I'm not going to do it. You don't want to help yourself? Why should the hell should I try to save your ass? Bunch of ingrates. And just like the Noble said, I don't really say nothing about it. And it's not about the money, it's about the appreciation. I come on here bringing this fire and there's nothing that can touch us. You know it and I know it. It's not about money, it's about appreciation. Because I know I would want to show somebody my appreciation. Being out here all alone, I'm glad to know that somebody else think like I do and they can rock how I feel in the best of manners. Well, brother, you know, I really appreciate you. I know, your, I know internet is not free. Let me help you with an internet bill. Let me help you do something. Show my appreciation. I love your voice being out here. But we don't. And what's so sad, during the time when I become quiet, these folks come around, where, where you at brother? Where you been? Why are you asking me about where I've been? You don't give a damn about me. Because if you gave a damn about me, if you really gave a damn about the message, then you would support that message. I'm good entertainment for you. I'm entertainment. And I'm not an entertainer, but you still gonna treat me that way. So when they throw you in these mass graves and put you in these FEMA camps, you deserve it. And nobody should cry. Nobody should shed a tear. When your bones, when your flesh turn to bones because they starving you to death. Nobody should shed a tear because that's what you earn. Because you had a chance to turn things around and do better, and you refuse. So now you get what you earn. Nobody cry for your grandchildren, your grandbabies. You didn't even give a damn. So why should, should anybody else cry for your children? You don't give a damn. I love my grandchildren. I love myself. I love, you don't love nothing. You don't love nothing. You don't even know what the word love means. It's just a word that you use. Has no value. Because if you love black folks, if you love the truth, then you will support it. Get off your lazy ass and do what's necessary to spread the word and do what we need to do. I'm glad. I'm glad I've never been that way. Unfortunately, I wasted a lot of time with the nation of 
but I was trying. I, I take liberations very serious. It's by myself. Because y'all lazy cowards won't do nothing. You got little children during the 1960s. You had children willing to die, willing to fight, and grown people sitting at home on their ass watching everything on TV. Children and these men keep talking about how much of a man they are. You got women and children being sprayed with fire hoses and bit by dogs. Where the men at? I keep hearing about the deacons of defense. Which is wonderful. But uh, clearly, it wasn't enough deacons around to help defend. These men are pitiful. And you want me to sit around and give these black men all this unearned praise. They gods and warriors and all this nonsense. I don't see it. So why should I talk about something that don't exist? They are cowards, a bunch of booty chasers. You want a relationship with a woman? <laughs> hey, look. To go get them a white woman. Yes. Yes, I want these black men to go get a white woman or Asian or whatever the hell you want. Because you don't deserve a soul sister. You don't deserve her. And soul sister, it's better to be by yourself than in the company of a fool, these cowards. It's better for the so-called black race to go extinct. Yeah, go get your white woman. Because you're not worthy of a soul sister. Bye. Adios. She should not be having your baby. I wouldn't give you no damn baby. That's for sure. If I, if I was a woman, I wouldn't give none of these old cowardly ass suckers no baby. Bunch of losers. They won't. They won't praise. They won't praise for something they don't do. I take care of my family. I go to work in the house of another man. You cannot be an alpha male. You cannot consider yourself a man. Depend on and live under the roof of another man. You don't make any laws, you don't make no policy, nothing. I'm not going to babyfy these guys. I'm not going to cuddle them. They need to stand up and be real men and die, die with honor. Only thing on their mind is how much booty I'm going to get. Continue on this road for six miles. You don't deserve no booty. You don't deserve nothing. Nothing but a stud horse. Still a slave. That's all you work is out here making babies and don't produce a f for, for these babies. Giving these children nothing. I see these youngsters out here. The elders have failed. Yes, they have. And you still have the mindset that they do and you will fail also. So what make you any damn different? You ain't doing nothing no different. Making babies, living with races, trying to be a damn rapper, 
so that you can get on TV and show your greasy ass teeth. Spending the, the, the money with the peck of wood face that you don't even, you don't even give the, the money any value. Nobody respects black men. Black men are cowards. Black men are incompetent. Black men are pathetic. A bunch of losers. I'm ashamed to be part of this gender. I'm ashamed. As a little boy, I have more, I had more spunk in me as a little boy eight, nine years old, years old than these grown men. And just because you holler black power, just because you hoop and holler and talk all that stuff, that don't impress me. As a little boy, I went up against the white man by myself. I didn't hoop and holler and talk about how bad I am. I was in the white man's face as a child by myself. You might be impressed by Louis Farrakhan and a lot of these people that run their damn mouth. They never challenged. They never dealt with this peck of wood face to face. Even in my personal life, I was locked up. Had to deal with these suckers every day. They could have killed me outright and got away with it. Legal murder. I was running my mouth to them. All these folks running their mouth, they never had to deal with the peck of wood like that face to face. In 2.5 miles, keep to the left on I-80. I was ready to die, kill me. You're not gonna stop me from talking. You are a devil, you're a peck of wood. You're evil and wicked. I'm going to tell you that in your face. Lock me up, kill me, whatever the hell you want to do. I'm surrounded by cowards. Lazy. This one RBG, RBG Negro, as soon as he start talking about me, he want to talk about me. But before he started his video, he talking about the Washington Redskins, a, a stupid ass football team. Do you ever hear me talking about the white man's football team? I don't give a damn if they win or lose. I don't care. I want to be liberated out of this system. The hell with their NBA, their NFL, and all this other garbage they got. See, they steal slaves. But they talk all that crap to make themselves feel good. RBG, slave. Black first, slave. Comedic, slaves. Hebrew Israelite, slave. If you wasn't a slave, then we would be free. We would be liberated. Keep to the left on I-80 slaves they all slaves because if all these people was men if they wasn't slaves then explain to me how the hell we still why we why we still in this condition if all these men by the thousands not a not a few hundred by the thousands they supposed to be free they got free minds they they have free minds that's because they are slaves. They never, they never will actually deal with this racist male in no kind of manner. They putting on a front. See, that's why they don't like me because they think I'm supposed to be impressed because they talk tough. I don't care about you talking tough. I heard Louis Farrakhan 
Talk Tough all during the 80s. So what? And I'm looking at, okay, we talking all this talk, you know, all this stuff, do for self, and the white man is, okay. I hear the talk. Now where's the substance? Now where's the substance? There is none. It's a show. Comedic show. Black first show. RBG Nation show. Turn the channel. What's your favorite show? Is it comedic? Is it Nation of Islam? Is it Black First, RBG? What's your favorite show? Because that's all you're going to get. It's a Barnum and Bailey. Things are not what they seem. Oh, man. I'm sorry I got caught up. I got caught up in the moment. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Subscribe. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. <laughs> Woo! I'm ashamed to be a black man. I, I really am. It's shameful. Well, actually, I'm not a black man. I'm a soul brother. But anyway, you know where I'm coming from. Black man. A label that the cracker gave them. No dark-skinned people on this planet called no dark-skinned, melanated people, whatever you want to say, called themselves black or African. The native people did not call themselves natives or aboriginal. These are labels that come from the oppressor. But you free, bunch of slaves. And then you want to get angry at those who have a vision, who have a creative mind, that want to take you out of the labels that the oppressor put on us. <laughs> wow. Legend says the FEMA, the FEMA camps are here in the city, in the inner cities already. Yeah. I say this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta get out of here. I remember and you probably might still see them. I saw trucks and I saw trains with plastic coffins. And I saw the National Guard moving tanks and other equipment back and forth across the freeways of this country. Now, I don't know why all this is going on. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or none of that. But it make you wonder, what y'all doing with all them coffins? Why are you moving all these tanks and things around? But, if you are getting ready for a, what they call that? Uh, damn, what you call that? It's a lockdown. Military lockdown. It's a, it's a word for it. I forgot what it is. Come on, help me now. Help me now. Uh, what's the word? Come on, y'all. Come on, legend. Tell me. Military lockdown. They lock everything down, you know, and, and, they, and they start putting people in FEMA camp. What they call that? Martial law. If you're getting ready for martial law, you need to get, you need to put your equipment and your people in certain positions. And these coffins, nothing but cheap, cheap plastic coffins. And you can throw maybe two or three, four bodies in one coffin. I don't know what they're gonna do with these coffins. They're not going to a funeral home. It's not those type. These are just some cheap, cheap, simple coffins. And you're moving your tanks and certain equipment around the country in certain positions. 
why are you doing it? But if you are, if you are preparing, if you prepare for martial law, now it all we we can see what's going on now. That's right. See, the situation with Hurricane Katrina Speed is a good example, or just a a a, a, a heads up on things to come. But we don't want to take nothing serious. So when those things come down on you, I know for me, I'm not shedding no damn tear for nobody. We got what's coming to us. It's here now. Now you got to deal with it. Your ass whooping is here now. So on that note, let me get out of here. Roll out. I appreciate everybody in the chat room. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube, for giving me the privilege to talk. And some folks, I don't know, they jealous or whatever. He make too many videos. I'm in a position where I can do that. And I have something on my mind. Now you, I don't know. You don't have nothing to talk about, that's your business. You can only make one video a month, one video a week or whatever, that's your, that's your business. <laughs> Morel said, go tell, go tell them to go watch Alquan. Yeah, go watch Alquan. He make a video once a week, once a month or something like that. Saying the same thing he always say, all the Caribbeans, you know, everybody ages, you know, things like that. Same stuff. On that note, let me get out of here. Let me roll. I talk with y'all. When we, when we talk, and uh, adios amigos, bon voyage, hasta luego, habarigani, all that kind of good stuff, assalamu alaikum, whatever. Take it easy, I'm only 5,000, I wish us love, peace, and soul.